PC Wiz Kids Tech Talk. Today we're looking at the Asus P60 SE Intel motherboard. This is an Intel LGA 1366 socket board using the X58 chipset. So that's triple channel memory that this supports. And of course the latest Intel Core i7 CPUs including the Extreme CPU that I reviewed recently, the 980X. Now this has solid capacitors that are high quality. We're talking about power phase design that supports overclocking so good overclocking support and a decent bias with tons of settings which I'll show you in a moment and this is why I would choose this board over a deluxe board because it has all the features other deluxe boards have without spending the money in a deluxe board for example this board costs about two hundred dollars US an extreme board can cost you up to four hundred dollars why would you pay that this can give you just as good as performance. It's got the same type of chipsets. It might not have all the fancy looks and, uh, and, and the uh, heat pipe might not look the same, but when the bottom line comes in, you can get decent and really good results with this board. And it has tons of features which are almost identical to other deluxe versions. So looking at all the features, well, there's tons to mention. But one of the things that I always look for in one of these boards is all the ports, right? Does it have all the USB ports? Does it have all the uh, I.O. ports that I want to use? Does it have uh, support for uh, coax or optical? If you're hooking up, uh, you know, your audio systems and things like that. Uh, does it have support for FireWire? Maybe you've got a video camera that uses FireWire or some other video equipment, uh, things like that. Looking inside here, you can see it's got some headers there for your uh, connectors on the case, the I.O. shield plate, some SATA cables. You can never get enough of those, so comes with a whole bunch there. And, of course, a CD, which has utilities from Asus to monitor and set up your, your PC and, and things like that. And the manual, of course, can't live without that in case you want to look at uh, the board and its settings. And uh, they still include the uh, IDE connector because this is a slightly older board, so they're still uh, having uh, IDE. PS2 connectors for your keyboard and mouse. HDMI is not on here. This is not a board with video out. Okay, it has optical out. It has SATA out. It has FireWire, USB, 8-channel audio, but the video card you have to install yourself. Okay, this is not an integrated video card board. Now, looking there, you can see it's got decent heat sinks around those uh, high-quality capacitors. There's the triple-channel uh, memories slots up to 24 gigabytes of memory on that of course and um, looking at it here from the other side you can see the uh, slots there for the video card so you can install tons of video cards there no problem uh, and the uh, SATA connectors at the back pointing towards the back so that it doesn't interfere with your video card when you install that on the PCI Express uh, slots and um, at the back underneath you can see the stack cool 2 Okay, and uh, the plate underneath, which is going to help keep it cool, of course, uh, the CPU. And um, looking at the case, the system here, I installed the board on this Cooler Master HAF X. And uh, you can see here it's using the Intel Extreme 980X CPU triple channel memory from Kingston, which I reviewed. And you can click on the link to review that if you want, the uh, Kingston, as well as the V6 cooler, the CPU cooler and uh, the HD um, 5870 video card. Now looking here at the BIOS, I booted up the machine. Most of my time I spend in the AI tweaker because this is where you can get your hands dirty and go in and tweak the uh, memory timings, the memory settings, the frequencies, of course, the bus speed, the ratios, all of that can be um, basically changed in here to get the best performance out of your CPU. And that's what I had to do in order to get uh, four gigahertz. So this board obviously supports XMP, the Extreme Memory Profiles, and um, you can configure your CPU and disable things if you're overclocking. Of course, it has all the required options there, so that way you can tweak the uh, CPU to the max. Now what I've done is I've just uh, increased the CPU ratio to 30, and um, I got 4 gigahertz out of that. Left the uh, voltage on auto so it compensated by itself. Just tweaked the memory a little bit so that way the memory was stable and did not cause any problems with the overclocking, and I was set. Went into the power management settings, you know, just to make sure that I can uh, run the fan on a suitable profile there, okay, because I want enough air blowing um, at the uh, CPU. So uh, when you're overclocking, you might want to increase that. Otherwise, if you're not overclocking, you can put it on silent. 
right? So these are the, th the features that you want in the BIOS. These are things that you know some people take for granted, they don't know about, but uh, they really help, okay? They really help. Um, boot options, those are uh, pretty much uh, standard. And then of course under the tools, you got the Asus Easy Flash, which is terrific for flashing your BIOS. The Express Gate for going online. Overclocking profiles that you can save, so you can save your profiles that you've uh, done here in the AI Tweaker. And um, if you need to go back and load those, you can. Here we are in Windows 7, okay. 4 gigahertz, you can see CPU Z is reporting. There's the multiplier, the bus speed, the QPI link, frequencies, the memory timings, as you can see here, the Northbridge frequency. I'm running this at uh, basically slightly overclocked than, uh, than advertised, so uh, 21. Um, 33 megahertz so very nice uh, board solid reliable good for overclocking definitely recommend this one if you're looking for a board for uh, about $200 and I hope you enjoyed this video and thank you for watching